Hello and welcome to part 6 of the Advanced Terrain Tutorial Series. First of all let me say that the response to the last video is <laughs> quite overwhelming but fantastic. Uh, thank you for the support and I'm very happy to say that apparently I'm not the only one looking forward to the release of the tools for Black Ops 3. If it happens I think we've got a bright future ahead and hopefully we can carry on doing what we love. So uh, that's great news. Um, Back onto this video though, in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at blending and texturing on terrain patches, things we can do, things we probably shouldn't do, and everything in between. So hopefully we're going to take a basic setup like this and turn it into something that looks like this over here. So here we go with that, let's get on with it. Okay, so we've got our basic setup over here, what we've got, we've got an asphalt piece of terrain running through the middle, we've got dirt either side of it. I'm just going to change my textures in the 2D window back to wireframe and with that done we can see what we've got two patches either side and one in the middle and what we need to do essentially with blending is hide or make a transition between these two textures it doesn't have to be complicated and obviously the most efficient and easiest way to do it is to take a copy of the central patch or our asphalt copy and paste shift uh, pressing uh, control C and then control V and then we can select our corresponding decal or blend texture to our surrounding terrain there normally will be one if you're using the stock textures uh, highlight the central line of uh, vertices press G to bring up our tool and then blend that away that is the most simple blend, it looks perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with that and in some cases that will be all you need. But if you wanted to go into more detail you certainly can and uh, I'm going to show you how to go into that now. So that's a perfectly fine blend, nice and simple, we don't need to do any more than that in some areas of the map, that's all you're going to need. But we want to go into more detail so we've already kind of run into a bit of a problem here and that problem is that we're not being able to remove enough of the blend texture to reveal our base texture or enough of it as we might like. So to do that we're going to need to add more vertices columns. As you can see from the previous one it was only taking away so much from the one vertical uh, one vertice column that we had so to reveal more of our base texture we have to add more vertice columns into it so that's what I'm going to do now so I'm just going to add one over to this side I'm going to do the same on the other side and you'll notice that I'm adding and then removing rather than adding and then moving the vertice column where I want it and there's a reason for that if I get rid of the excess here if I were to add a column and then move it over that might create problems further down our patch and we might not want that. So if I just come over to our more advanced patch over here, I'm just using this as an example in my little test map here, so if I just come over to my other road, it's got a bend in it, it's a little bit more complex. So if I just add a vertice column into this one and I try to move it, you'll see what happens, it creates a problem a little bit further down the patch. So now I select that and try to move it. Oh. Oh, it's warped everything all along it look we're gonna to have to go in and fix that and that's going to be a proper ball ache so we don't want to do that so the best practice as you can see that's just going to be a nightmare add vertices columns until they're in a position you want them and then remove the excess and that's just going to save you from a lot of work later on down the line trying to move vertices columns into position especially if you're doing roads because they tend to be longer patches so that's just another little tip. Add vertice columns until they're in the position where you want them and then remove the excess. So now when we apply our uh, blend texture, we can remove much more of it and we can get it closer to the edge and reveal more of our base texture. So add vertice columns in until you achieve the level of blend that you like. Uh, the other thing is, since we haven't actually got any blend texture on the central portion, we might as well split that away and delete the excess. Again, keeping control of our assets and it keeps that patch um, into one selectable patch. And now all we've got is two thin strips of terrain creating that blend or that transition between our textures. And that's all we need. And now, of course, we've got that blend in place. We can swap and change these textures as much as we like. We don't have to stay with these, of course. But once we've got these in place, any old texture will do. 
unless of course you want to use a texture like this one here if I come back over to our already pre-prepared example we got this rough edge line to it and this is a little bit more complex to achieve but nonetheless once it's there again we can replace it with any texture we want so if we just if I just show you here what we've already done and apply this texture to it and let's just use natural on that you can see that no matter what we do we're not going to be able to get the edge of this over our dirt layer and that's what we need to do essentially this is going to be the transition between our asphalt and our dirt but we're not going to be able to do it with how we've just created that particular piece of blend so we need to do it a different way so what I'm going to do I'm just going to delete what we've already done and I'm going to reselect our patch this time I'm going to split this section away uh, and once I've done that I'm going to add another vertice line down the middle and I'm going to split that again so now we've got two separate patches on this far edge patch I'm going to use our dirt texture it's important every once in a while just to cap our textures just to make sure they line up but we've got our two separate sections here I'm going to select them both I'm going to copy and paste them both and then I'm going to merge them back together by pressing W you can see that's happening because that's just changed now I'm going to apply this texture natural that again I want the edge on this side so I'm going to rotate it and actually that's worked out pretty well we've already got it in place but just to blend between this edge texture and our asphalt I'm just going to reselect the edge and blend it away and there we have it it's in place we've got our nice little rough edge and it works pretty well um, just a little tip when you're maneuvering textures or moving them around on a patch if I just reselect that if you press and hold alt and then press and hold the right mouse button and move your mouse around you can make tiny adjustments without having to use the surface inspector that's just a handy little tip you can move it however you want that way so with that done another thing I like to try and do is keep a lot of these patches uh, as one as much as possible so I'm just going to select our asphalt reselect the underneath layer and merge those back together so that's one piece same on the dirt and this just helps us when we're changing things around so we've got our asphalt and our dirt back together again and we've got our blend or transition texture between the two and it looks pretty good of course we'll have to do the same on the other side um, just another little tip about selecting textures uh, this will work quite well without anything selected if you wanted to select every patch with a certain texture on it uh, for a quick change highlight it in our textures window and press shift a that will highlight every single patch that has this texture applied to it but of course remember if you're going to change it and you don't want to change everything it's going to select every, every other texture with it on so um, every other um, patch with the texture applied so this is only useful if you're going to change um, a particular texture okay so select it in there without anything selected in a 3d or 2d window shift a and that will select every single patch with this texture applied to it that's quite handy okay so I'm just going to do the other side really quickly now since I've already been through it once um, so we're going to split this away, select it, add another vertice column, split it again, texture that with our uh, dirt texture, take a copy of both of them, control C, control V, copy and paste, uh, apply uh, A, hang on a minute, press W to merge, apply, natural, that's going to be the best one, alt and right mouse button to make minor adjustments without having to use the uh, surface inspector select that apply it job done so that's that's a quick way to use a texture like this um, if you want to do a little bit more detail and we're just going to merge those back together again okay so now we've got our edge transitions done uh, we can think about adding some more detail to the surrounding terrain um, if we just select both those patches, Control C, Control V, I'm going to use this dry grass. Uh, bring up the verts. I'm just going to select manually, apply a blend, 
bang, done. I'm not going to go into too much detail there. You get the picture. It's just sort of a large area to blend and texture, but it just adds a nice little bit of something else. Uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about adding sort of decals and being a bit more selective about how we add them um, and add more detail into it. For example, we've got our tarmac puddle, as they've called it. Let's just call it an oil spill. And I'm going to apply it to our asphalt texture, but I'm going to be selective about where I add it. Rather than selecting the whole patch, we don't need to. We don't need to waste our assets again. Um, so I'm going to select our asphalt. And since it's a small area, it's not a particularly complex patch. I'm just going to split away these edge parts because we don't actually want this texture applied to those. We're not going to use it, so we don't need it. Reselect our patch. Control C, Control V. Apply it. And I'm just uh, going to manually select again where I don't want this texture. Blend that away. Uh, now, I, I think that's a little bit too prominent. I want to knock that back a bit. So I'm going to use our... Um, advanced patch editing tool, uh, flatten an alpha, remember, come back in and I'm just going to blend that away, really just just knock it back a bit, so it's just not quite so prominent, I want it just, I want it there but not so much, so I'm just going to do that until I'm happy with it, yeah that's good enough, we could use the other tool as well but sometimes I find the advanced tool is a little bit more, uh, it's a little easier to use sometimes, anyway, so there we go, another little bit of detail. Again, we're going to remerge our uh, asphalt patch so it's easier to select later on. Another little tip about selecting patches and different textures. Um, we haven't got any multiple layers on this particular example, but if we did, it's going to be, well, let's put it this way, it's a little bit of a ball lake to select them when we've got two, three, four layers of uh, patches and textures. So this only works on the later versions but COD4 World at War, if you right click in the 3D window over a patch you see it brings up this drop down menu. It's got all of the layers listed and we can select our textures this way or we can select all of them. We want to select our dry grass we just click that one. So that's another little tip, it's quite handy but I try to keep the multiple layers as low as possible. It's just really uh, <laughs> it's, it's a ball lake. So, on that note, I'm going to leave it there for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's been informative. And I shall see you on the next one. Cheers.